Hello everyone and welcome back to Age of Nagash which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video we are going to be talking about White Kings. I have just seen there's a new Warhammer Community article and fresh off the video yesterday where we talked about Soulblight Gravelords I thought why not cover this as well. I have not read through this article yet so I do not really know what it contains but I am very much a fan of the new White King model on the Skeletal Steed, so let's see what they're going to tell us about him. And the other thing I just want to say as well, as I was halfway through actually recording my How to Start Collecting Stormcast Eternal Army, and I was just like, you know, Lord, give me a sign on why I should stop recording this video, and here we are. So going into this article, what I also want to hear from you guys is your thoughts on the new White King model or whatever they're going to tell us in this article, let me know that in the comments as well. There's a bunch of your um, comments and stuff you put on my last video I put up, which I'm going to reply to tonight. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll get back to you then. So let me know your thoughts on the White King of what we've learned in this video down below. Put it in the comments. So it says White Kings, more than just fancy a bat's hat. We'll find out. Again, fantastic artwork here favourite uh, cover of a battle tome in the whole of Age of Sigma. So it says, with Soulblight Gravelord's battle tome around the corner, uh, Vampiric Necromancers are raising their armies to fight once again. Counted among their strongest allies are the right, uh, sorry, rightly feared White Kings, and they deserve a closer look. So again, fantastic battle tome, really, really liked it. Talked a lot about it in yesterday's video. There's White King right there as well. And then it says, we know what you're thinking. Who are White Kings? And why are they in the Vampire book? Battle Tome, Soulblight Gravelords has a lot more going on than just vampires. It explores the complicated history and politics of the armies of death with a depth uh, we haven't yet seen. That's really interesting. I'd absolutely love it if they play a Cities of Sigma theme. I've said this all the way through when we thought they were getting a new... Death Battle Tome before we knew it was called Soulblight Gravelords, and then when we've seen the Vampire and we knew it was Soulblight Gravelords, really, really want it to be a Six of Sigma theme because it just gives so much flavor and so much fluff, and just so much uh, ability to create your own uh, lore and uh, like backstory to your cities. And it just like puts your cities on a map, so it's just really, really like it. Really hope they're going to do something like that. And because they mentioned the word politics and uh, the depths of uh, death armies we haven't seen before be really really good like it could be like the soul blight kingdoms and then it could be the grave lords could be the white kings who knows but anyway it says while everyone in the mortal realm is keeping an eye on the gash's new favorite creations the ostrich bone reapers there are entire empires of established undead all across the realms and then here we have a older artwork um from oh, trying to remember oh, Apologies, cannot remember the name of the artist. I've got it in my Book of the Dead book. Uh, really nice art of a White King right here from Warhammer Fantasy. Um, and it says, hold your horses before you say the goth look is dead. And then the White King were once conquerors and warlords and they continue in death as they had in life. Carving out domains with endless armies of skeletons and zombies. They rule over death rattle kingdoms, each with their own territory and even culture. So that's just giving loads of different flavors for like sub legions and stuff or what we could presume. And then it says clad in uh, Verdigish, Verdigreist armor, not too sure. And uh, tattered fi uh, finery, a mere shadow of their former glory. Their tactical acumen remains as sharp as ever. So yeah, this is the obviously the White King model. We're aware, funny enough, if you click to zoom in, it makes it further away. But this is the new one we're aware of. Thing looks really, really cool. We all thought it was Blood Knights, and we were all disappointed when we turned out it wasn't because we weren't 100% sure we were getting a new Blood Knights, and now we know we are getting Blood Knights. So we're all happy with the design of this model and no longer annoyed that we thought it was going to be a Blood Knight. And um, the design of it absolutely matches the old White King on a camel, I believe that horse was meant to look like. Um, yeah, really, really cool. It really gives um, really good hope that there's going to be new Black Knights. You heard what I thought about the Black Knights. In yesterday's video that I put up, where I thought I like them, think they do the job, but I'm always happy for new Black Knights uh, models, of course. And then it says, White, uh, so okay, he's not just all white, he's amazing. Yeah, okay, I didn't need to read that. Anyway, White Kings retain a fierce pride in individuality 
and they're not really, uh, sorry, not easily bound into service by any but Nagash and his Mortarks. Soulblight Monarchs instead offer packs and alliances to secure their valuable services, exchanging rights of conquest for aid in their endless wars. So you've got like obviously the Death Row Kingdoms so are led by the White Kings and not necessarily a vampire or a soul-like creature, which is cool. And then you can see the sort of allegiances they make with each other. Then we've got the old guy here who I actually own, like I've mentioned before. It says uh, you can order this a bad boy uh, right now. Okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, okay, under <laughs> the... Uh, Oh, what the fuck is that word? Uh, under the vicious gaze of the ostrich brain reapers spreading across the mortal realms, many white kings appreciate powerful allies who promise to help them hold the death rattle kingdoms. The new mounted white king is undoubtedly one of the most anticipated models in the new Soulblight Gravelords range. I haven't showed as many. So yes, the ones we've seen so far, for sure. And for good reason. It's a sublime update on a true classic. Keep an eye out for more information about Battletome Soul Black Gravelord soon. If you missed the army overview, go and take a look at them in the Faith and Fury Damnation preview roundup, blah, blah, blah. You can go check out the review I did on that if you'd like to, if you haven't already seen it. And um, just an interesting thing though, so I don't think I mentioned this in the last video because I don't think I could find it on the website. Uh, Krell, the White King with the big uh, like black axe, he was... Um, uh, from Warhammer Fantasy and everything else was a named character and then just became a generic hero for Legions of the Gash and Death. Um, he won't be in Soul Black Gravelords because he's resin. Like, in case I didn't mention that yesterday, talking about White Kings today. Um, so a few things I just want to point out here quickly. So it says, it exposes the complicated history and politics of armies of Death with a depth we haven't seen yet. So I don't think this is saying this, but... It does give an indication that maybe Nighthawk could be part of this, but I don't think they are. I think Nighthawk are going to be in their book. They're not going to be in Soul Black Grave Lords. That's my thoughts. But this is a interesting little development that could be something I'm massively just over reading. Um, but you have to. When they give you this much text and I have to make a video out of this, you have to overread the shit out of this information. So it could be Nighthawk. Who knows? But we definitely know things that are like the Death Rattle could be a bit. But if, like, the whole Death Rattle Kingdoms, and they've always been a thing in Age of Sigma as well, so it's not like a new concept, but you would think that they would need more units for that. Um, or maybe there's Dead Walker Kingdoms, but presumably not, because it says the White Kings lead the Dead Walkers. Um, yeah, we just don't really know too much. What I've always said, though, and uh, I think I was asked this uh, by Doug from 2 Plus Tough when we were playing Vermintide once, it was being asked, like, sort of... Um, death armies turning on the gash and all that sort of thing and my thoughts was um with the death rattle and the ostrich bone reapers the gash really only cares about his ostrich bone reapers that is his end goal it's not even like the necroquake was his end goal the ostrich bone reapers was his end goal and he's enacting it now and everything else not important enough for him. So things like uh, Death Rattle, we can see here, like a skeleton and everything else. They they serve the job. You know, they raise out the ground, they hold back chaos for now, they expand and the gash's borders, but they're just there because they're already dead. They're already like resources to be used, right? And that is how Nagash used skeleton resources as an example by raising the skeletons and getting them to fight again. Nagash now has enacted his final work, which means that that's no longer the most reasonable and the most useful way to use the skeleton resource. Not by raising them up to fight again, but by repurposing the bone and shaping it into the bone reapers. So what that means is, I believe Death Raptor Kingdoms, even if they're loyal to Nagash, are under threat from the new shiny versions of themselves being the Ostrich Bone Reapers. Because the Ostrich Bone Reapers, I've said this before, they'll come across a Death Rattle Kingdom, and what they'll do is they'll go, right, if they were alive and living, we wouldn't kill them all right now because we know they can breed more, essentially, which can harvest more bone from, and we can tend this city or this kingdom like a farmer would you know, attend his flock or something like, whatever they say, attend his herd or whatever, and rather than just killing them all now. When the Ostrich Bone Reapers come across the Death Rattle Kingdom, 
it's on the lines of, well, they can't breed anymore. And, you know, <laughs> if we wait 10 years, the amount of bones we can get from these guys are going to be the same. So we're just going to slaughter them all now and harvest them because it makes no difference and we might as well get it done with for, you know, account purposes to get the numbers in. Um, and then that means that, you know, death rattles can't really, unless Nagash goes, no, this death rattle kingdom, you know, it's not going to get killed or a Mortark can maybe step in the way of the ostrich brain reapers, depending on the power structure. The ostrich brain reapers have no care with diplomacy with death rattle units because they're already dead. They can't breed. They can't reproduce more bone. We'll kill them now. I say kill. It's not really the right word. We will harvest them now, I think is probably the best way, because there's no point in waiting. It's a waste of time. There's no benefit to it. We'll do it now, and then we'll know how much bone we can calculate from this for future uh, developments and plans and building underpasses and, you know, bridges and whatever they're going to do with the bone. So I think there could be like a... They could We could see an interesting divide within the Soul Black Grave Lords books where some of the armies are loyal to Nagash and some aren't. And the reason for it is because of the Ostrich Bone Reapers. And not like the Ostrich Bone Reapers have gone rogue. No, they're just enacting Nagash's wishes. Nagash has no real purpose. Like, if you look at like vampires and Warhammer, they were created by accident. Like, you know, Nagash had use for them, but as soon as Nagash has got his newer guys being the Ostrich Bone Reapers and the leaders of those being the Mortisans and everything else, he just hasn't got any need for vampires and traditional like vampire count units, I suppose you could call it, or just traditional death units um like check out you know like that zombie like that's just a walking corpse with a, a pitiful attack characteristic compared to a mortec guard as an example so kill two of those zombies and repurpose their uh resource of their bones into a mortec guard is a better service than a gash and that's kind of what i'm taking away from this article uh like again massively over reading it but i just think it makes for an interesting conversation and let me know what you guys think about um, everything i just said there about the ostrich bone reapers and how they'll get on with the soul blight grave lords i think it would be really interesting to uh, to hear that in the comments and uh yeah so with that guys i'm gonna thank you very much for watching this video I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed it. If you did, make sure, as always, you smash that like button, you smash the subscribe button, and you smash the bell notification. It really helps out the channel. Basically, by smashing the like, it means that YouTube knows that this is a good video and hopefully will recommend it to more people. If you press the subscribe button, that's how the channel grows. If you press the bell notification, it means that you'll never miss any of my future videos, especially if you're particularly interested with the Soul Black Grave Lords. I will not be missing out on their content and reviewing it when I can. So make sure you click the bell button. And for everyone else who's already pressed those buttons, doesn't go unnoticed, I'm really appreciative of it. And what I'd also like to say is, if you would like to support the channel that step further, you will find a join button next to the subscribe button, which means you could join and become a member here, Agent of Gash, which means you can give anything from one pound a month Go straight towards keeping the channel going and make sure that I can continue making these videos to try and help people get into Age of Sigma and continue their Age of Sigma journey. And you'll also find a link to my Patreon on the top of the description down below where you click it, go to my Patreon. You can even give anything from just like $1 a month. And even if you just consider um, supporting in that way, I'd be hugely grateful. And what I want to do now is say a massive shout out to those people who decided to do just that and support the channel in this way. And because these people... I can continue to make this content, like I say. I'm not lying about it. If I didn't have this kind of support, YouTube's non-profitable, Patreon's non-profitable, but if I didn't have any support at all, I just wouldn't be able to justify putting in the time. So my Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon is going to be Stuart F., who is the biggest supporter here on Agent of Gash. So thank you so much for your continued support, Stuart. Really does mean a huge lot, and deciding to become a Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon recently. And then my Morgars are going to be Jonathan H., Philco, Bleed Red, and Krista G., who have been big supporters for a long time now. Never goes unnoticed. Thank you so much we'll continue support especially at that tier and then my vampires which are going to be Mir, Martin S, Rouse321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, Spare Bear, Christopher H, Northdrop and Nathan F. Thank you so much for your continued support. Really does go a long way and like I say especially at that tier as well and vampires very much on the Soul Blight theme so thank you so much and what I'd like to say as well is Nathan F is a new Patreon member so thank you so much for deciding to join the team and keep Asian Agash going really does mean a lot and then my Necromancers which is going to be Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, 
Dice Sagas, Wolfnick, Mike W, Quad, Cranky Womba, Christopher C, Christopher F, James S, Robin S, Steve T, James T, Patrick F, and JJ. Thank you all so much for your continued support. And if anyone would like to become one of these wonderful people, remember, like I said, click that join button or press the link to my Patreon on the top of the description down below. I'd really appreciate anything you can give to help support the channel. But if you can't do anything like that, no problems at all. But if you did enjoy the video, all I ask is you like, subscribe, and press that bell button. It really helps out. Also, things to mention, if you'd like to join the community we've got on Discord, you'll find a link to my Discord in the description of this video as well. Really great community in there. We've actually just gone over 200 members as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Probably should do something about that, say like a little notification. And... Um, well, I'd say more than anything else though, guys, I'm just really glad that you came in here, checked out this video. If you think that you know someone who will find this video helpful, make sure you go share it with them. And until next time, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you're well. Remember until next time to stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands for God's sake and stay hygienic. So that means by the time Soul Black Grave Lords comes out, maybe we can actually start playing in real life again. Would be amazing, especially with this really new cool army. And above anything else, guys, remember until next time that Nagash is all and all is one in the gash.